so you want we we obviously both want Mason back. Yeah, this he, is what is, I'm saying. I'm is saying he getting the, the edge as QB one going in this off season? In terms of this off season, yeah. And then whoever we bring in, we can decide what level of competition that is. But to me. I'm running back like Mason's going to be in this conversation for QB1 this all season. I agree. To me, I thought that he showed more than enough, not just with his arms. I thought with his leadership, I thought with his toughness, I thought his ability to handle adversity. Me and you talked off mic, and I said, man, one of the things that I hated was that we never saw him struggle. We never got a chance to see him have a turnover. We never got a chance to see him have to come back from a loss or anything negative throughout that three-game winning streak. And to me, as bad as the pick was, I'm like, bro, this gives me a chance to see how you're going to respond. Yeah. And I thought he did a heck of a job responding. He did not clam up. I thought, in fact, he got more aggressive, more comfortable, and made some dope throws, on man. Third, third, He's third extending longs. plays yeah. on third down. I'm like, bro, that's the type of stuff that when we talk about QB1 or franchise QBs, yeah. what makes them unique is their ability to have those off schedule plays, right? When it breaks down, what can you do to extend it? And we said, multiple ways of going about extending plays it doesn't have to be the lamar jackson type it don't got to be the josh allen type it doesn't have to be the patrick mahomes type or the joe burrow type everybody has their variation of what they do to make themselves you know special at times and to me man i thought that mason definitely was showing a lot more of that last night and he took some shots too man he definitely took some shots did him nor our running game any favors yesterday bad matchup was what they said again opposite of what i expected going in See, that was kind of maybe, maybe not bro. as much the yeah. pass rush. I thought we'd do better in the run game. But maybe you're right, too. I told you. When, whenever they happened. packed the box, we should have opened it up more. I thought that was a big part. And then I also thought that the nickel, remember what I told you, seven, Taron Johnson? Yeah. It's like, bro, if he's playing, that's going to be the question. Can we out physical him? Can we make them have to take him off the field? We did not do a good enough job of that consistently. I thought the one drive we did, that was when we ended up throwing the pick. And you know what? That pick. Not a bad decision by Mason. No, it was you just, got he Deontay on Kair Elam. Yeah, chuck he, it up. See who's see who's the better was, playmaker between the two. Literally, oh, it was a difference of back hip versus front hip. If he throws it on the front hip, it's a touchdown. He throws it on the back hip, it's a pick. And the game inches, man. What what's sad about Kair Elam and how he played that game? That was probably the, the best I've ever seen him the play, pick, bro. Well, here's the thing: the pick. It looked like he was surprised. That's it, what I'm trying to tell you. He, he bro. didn't even try to pick that one, and the one he actually tried to pick he went dropped. right through his hands. Yeah, the one this, where pick and slipped. You, we've talked about this, bro. It's it's, it's just sad. And then you saw DJ cooking him too. DJ, yeah. When we had that drive in the third quarter, we started marching. Who did DJ get the the deep in and go off on? It was like, yeah, yeah. The pick shocked everybody. It's like, dang. It shocked Kyrie Elam. He, was, the, he did not try to pick that up. Everybody was shocked by this it play, bro. It landed in his bread basket. He's like, oh, wait, the ball's here. Everybody was shocked. I'm like, bro, did I just, my, great, you know, great. Look at me. He's like, dad, I thought he won't good. I said, yeah, I just, hey, bro, hey. <laughs> all right. And then you saw the pick drop. He's like, that's what we're talking and about. And I'm like, see, see, all right. He's like, but dad, this is PBU. I'm like, ah, oh, son, that should have been a pick, okay? <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely one of the ones, man. But I thought. Uh, Taron Johnson, who is an all-pro. Slot corner all-pro is a new position. They've just added all-pro, but he is an all-pro. So it was like, I get it. But that was part of the thing I said, man, with him. Remember, he was like, yo, he's kind of that in-between of a Mike Kilton, Arthur Milet, but can cover as well, which is a little bit more size on him. To me, that was also a little bit of a factor in this game, man. Because he was the one who forced the fumble on Pickens, man, in terms of when Pickens dropped it. That was him who hit the hit. Bro. Yeah. Um, I know the new catch rules and stuff. It probably oh, was a fumble, boy. dude. We can't keep going back and forth now. When it's when we wanted to work for us, we hollering about us to catch. When we don't want it to work for us, we like, nah, that was a drop. Come on, bro. We cannot be both ways. I'm just man. saying, quick eye test. I was like, it was incomplete. a catch. Fumble, I was like, incomplete. Bro. They slowed it down. I'm like, okay, based off the new rules, I guess. Little football rule. Why did none of these go in our our favor? Because they changed the rule to the Jesse James catch, and now we get screwed by it. Ball security, man. 